Hello everyone, and in this short instructional unit, I'd like to share with you how to structure your persuasive speech. Now for your informative speech, you had a lot of freedom. You had a lot of different choices about how to organize it. You might have organized it chronologically or spatially, or even depending upon your topic, you might have chosen different organizational schemes. Like for example, if you wanted to do a speech about painting, you could do the history of painting, the past, the present, and the future, or you could do a speech about how to paint, the materials, the procedure, and the cleanup. Now, for your persuasive speech, you'll be a little bit more limited. Uh, there are different ways that you can structure a persuasive speech, but for most of you folks, you'll probably be either doing the problem-cause-solution model, or you'll be engaging in Monroe's motivated sequence. But let's go over both of these kind of shortly here. So there's a lot of similarities between all speeches. So remember, you're still gonna start off with your introduction with a Roman numeral one. The A sub point's gonna be your attention grabber. Still grabbing attention the same way. You can start off with a story, you can use a statistic, you can ask a question, you could use a quotation, or you could always go for telling a joke. After you're done with your attention grabbing mechanism, then you wanna move on to your audience analysis. Now your audience analysis in a persuasive speech is gonna be a little bit different because you're gonna try and figure out where the audience stands politically on your particular persuasive issue. Now you can ask other students, hey, what do you feel about euthanasia or the death penalty? But odds are, you know, you're probably not gonna be able to ask all of them. So I would encourage you to do some research, try to figure out what the public opinion is about a particular issue. I uh, recommend to students that you should spend some time looking at Gallup, G-A-L-L-U-P, Gallup polls will give you almost all political polls on any particular position that's out there. Or if you can't find it there, you might want to look up the Pew Research Group, P-E-W. They've got a lot of statistics and polls that'll tell you sort of where Americans or where people sit on that particular issue. After you find out that, let's say 48% of, you know, Americans believe in the death penalty or something like that, you can put that in your audience analysis statement and then that'll help you set up the arguments for the rest of your speech. Uh, again, you want to establish your credibility. So if you haven't used a quotation inside of your introduction or you want to enhance your credibility even more, this is where you want to put in the best source from the best journal that you've found so far. And remember, you want to give us the author, their qualification, the title, and the date before you give us the actual quotation. After you're done establishing your credibility or enhancing your ethos in front of the class, then you move on to your thesis or your preview. And now when you set up your thesis or your preview, it's gonna be pretty simple. You're gonna do a problem, cause, solution framework. I mean, if you want to, you could probably do a cause, problem, solution, but the solution should probably always be last. When moving into your main points, you want to have, again, another Roman numeral, and then your A sub point is your problem. This is where there is a problem in society. Uh, Lloyd Bitzer writes an amazing book in the 1960s called The Rhetorical Situation, where he talks about how all public speaking is concerned with what he terms an exigence, an imperfection marked by need or urgency inside of society. So people are dying, people are starving, people aren't getting educated. Whatever big problem that's out there, this is where you want to quantify it. You want to put statistics in about what the big problem is that's going on. After you've established the problem, then you can move on to the cause. So you wanna figure out what the root cause of the problem is, or maybe there's something in our society that's blocking a solution. That could be a cause to a problem as well. And after you really get to the root cause of the problem, then you can move on to some solution steps that try to tackle the underlying cause and henceforth try to solve the original problem. Now, in your solutions, this is gonna call for a little bit deeper and different types of research. I expect you folks to be able to give me something that I can do immediately after your speech. You know, tell me that I can join an organization. Tell me that I can write a local letter to my congressperson. Tell me I can boycott a particular product. You gotta tell the audience what they can do to enact change in the real world. So I recommend that first you wanna think about what we can do personally, right? So let's say you're doing a speech about waste, you know, so you can tell people, hey, recycle more, right? Save your cans, save your plastics, save your bottles. 
Um, you could also then give us social groups, right? So you could talk about beach cleanup organizations that you could join to try and reduce the amount of waste that we have on our beaches. And then finally, of course, you could type political action, right? So you could tell us to write the governor, write the senators, write your local congressperson. This is a time to figure out who your, your local congressperson is so we can write letters to them. You might also include things like change petitions here or GoFundMe pages that people can donate to, but you wanna make sure you try to tackle all three, what we can do personally, what we can do socially, and what we can do politically. After you're done with your solution steps, then it's time to conclude. So your Roman numeral three here is your conclusion. You're gonna review your main points. So today we talked about the problem, the cause, and the solution. And then finally, of course, end off with some sort of bang, some sort of powerful final statement. You know, pathos appeals tend to work really well here. You pull at the emotional heartstrings of the audience just towards the end. Now, most of you folks will probably do a problem cause solution framework. It's pretty straightforward, it's easy to research, and it gets you through. But some of you folks might wanna kick it up a notch and you might wanna to move to Monroe's motivated sequence. So Monroe was a professor over at Purdue University and in the 1930s, he tried to figure out a way that you could always structure a speech to make it effective as a means of persuasion. And so he comes up with the attention, need, satisfaction, visualization, action model, or what we call Monroe's motivated sequence. You know, it's a little bit different. So your introduction is still the same, right? You grab the attention of the audience, so you tell a statistic, you tell a story, you ask a question, you tell us a quotation, or, you know, you try a joke. <laughs> then, of course, audience analysis, credibility, and your thesis statement will then preview the need, the satisfaction, and the visualization points inside of your body. When you move into your body, the need is somewhat like the problem, that there's a need in society. You know, people are dying, people are starving, people can't find good homes. Then you want to talk about how you satisfy this. So how can we allocate resources as a society, or how can we as individuals satisfy the urgent, pressing exigence or need that's inside of contemporary society? Now this is the big difference. After you're done satisfying the need, then you visualize, right? So then you wanna take a moment and say, imagine a world where everybody gets to go to college for free and everyone has the chance to climb the socioeconomic ladder, right? So you wanna visualize a world and that sort of entices the audience now to wanna to take some sort of action. Then you move to your conclusion, and then, of course, your A sub point is restating those main points. So today we talked about the need, the satisfaction, and the visualization. And then according to Monroe, the final step is calling us to action. So now you've primed the audience, and at the very end, then you give us personal, social, and political actions that we can take to go out and make change in the world.